Hi guys, welcome to another video and I've just got to say thank you for all the support and the nice messages that I've been getting on Facebook and Twitter about these videos. Keep them coming and the videos will keep coming as well. So this video, as you've probably seen from the title, is how to get the Daphne emulator uh, to recognise your control pad that you've got on your emulation station or on your modded arcade one-up machine. It's a pretty common theme that people can't get the uh, the buttons to work. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm going to show you how to do that today. First thing we need to do is make sure you've got the emulator set up correctly. So we're going to go into a quick a quick demonstration how to do that. So we're going to go into RetroPie settings. And then we're going to go down to RetroPie setup. I'll just give that a second to load up there. We're going to manage the packages, so let's go down to P. And this is in the optional packages. So we're going to click OK on the optional packages. And down here somewhere, there's something called Daphne. There we are. You can see I've, I've already installed it on this one, but we're going to install it again or update it. So if you press the OK button on that, and it'll ask you if you want to install from source or install from binary, whichever one you want to do, but I'm going to go and reinstall it from the pre-built pre binary and when you click that button it'll uh, everything will be hunky dory so if you let if you open it up and install it and let it install and we'll come back when it's done that was quite quick and uh, quick and painless there so when that's done if you go back and you start putting your roms wherever you've got them from i'm not going to tell you where to get them from because again google is your friend uh when you start putting your roms into your directory on your uh, SD card you will see that in here you will have uh, your Daphne screen on there so what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to go and transfer over to the PC onto the desktop and I'm going to show you how to set up your controls to be able to control these Daphne games absolutely first time so let's go over to the PC okay so we'll come over to this good old faithful quite familiar PC that you're all used to seeing right now and it's dead simple to get this working guys and this is the way I got it working on my uh, emulation station arcade cabinet so first of all you need to access your RetroPie which is on the network so you should know how to get it onto the network uh, by making sure you've got the IP address in there but you don't need that you just go to the back of the top type in backslash backslash RetroPie and you get this menu up and there's two files that you need to compare you need to go into configs you need to find the Daphne emulator here and double click it now you've got a few uh, files in here the one that we're interest, interested in is a Daphne input in here now I use a file called notepad plus plus because it just makes life easy for me it's color coordinate you can do it with notepad however I like using notepad plus 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 so if you right click it and open it up with the uh, editor of your choice but I'm going to use notepad plus plus and it opens up this file for you here now this here is all the instructions that you uh, it's the configuration uh, information that Daphne needs to be able to, to run properly it looks a lot more daunting than it actually is but don't worry about it we'll come to that in a second you need to compare that to back in the configs you need to go to all retro arts joypads and whichever one your joypads is so my two uh, sticks that I've got in my arcade machine the both Microtech USB joypads so we're going to open, right click that again and edit with notepad plus plus again that opens it up next to it so you'll see there's some numbers here uh, and these are numbers that we're going to use to put into here now what this is doing here is this is for the keypad presses so the first if you think of this uh let's go to button one to so keypad button one 30697 that tells emulation station to use a certain keyboard shortcut or keyboard press to make it work we're interested in the last number so where it says free okay but up at the top it says since zero is reserved for a special meaning joystick button zero is identified as one button one is identified as two etc etc so you need to add one so if we're looking for joypad button one which on my the way my sticks are laid out i want it to be my b button so i'm looking for b so input b is number is two so in here i just put three because it's originally two you need to add one makes it three button two which I want as button A on my joypad. So I'll look at number A. It's uh, configured as number one. So I'll set it as number two. Button three, which I want as the the right button uh, on my control pad. So if I look for right, 
uh, where's it gone now? Right button zero, so I've put it as number one. So these three are the three buttons that you need to concentrate on. You can leave the uh, the up, down, left, right, because as long as your joypad's configured properly, they'll pick them up. But the buttons are one, two, A, a B, and C. A bit further down, you need the start one button, which is obviously your start button. So start button uh, is six. So I need that as number seven. To insert a coin, which is my select button. Uh, where's my select button? There's number seven. So I'll put it as number eight. Then also you need to exit the emulator as well. Now because of the number of the buttons I've got on mine, I'm going to use an, I'm going to use my left button uh, on my drum, on my control pad, the L button. So if I go down to quit, uh, I want it to be the L button. So number three needs to be number four. So I've entered all them in there. Click the save button, and what that does is that saves it to the uh, config in the correct place, ready to go. You can just exit out of that now. You can exit out of all this. And then we're going to go back now to the uh, arcade. I'm going to run it all up and I'm going to show you playing the Daphne stuff on there. So now we're back over on the uh, arcade machine now. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this should all work. So let's load up our, our Daphne emulator. I'm going to play a little bit of Dragon's Lair 2 in here. Now this always takes ages to load does this. So we'll, uh, I'll just fast forward it until the game actually starts. Right, so we're into the game now, so let's see uh, if this works. So hopefully select button. Turn that down a bit. Uh, so hopefully if I press the select button. There we go, it started putting credit in. If I press the start button. There we go. And then let's have a game. So it only uses one button, does this. The, uh, the button that we set up is button one. So let's see what happens. I wasn't very good at Daphne games. Oh, left. There we are. Uh, left again. Uh, what else isn't left? Sword. Sword. Down. Right. Ah, so there we go, I died anyway. So there you see, it's, it, it does it work, it's worked as does it says it's tin. Uh, there's going to be some more Daphne videos come up in a minute because obviously, well not in a minute, in a, in a little while because this is a little bit of a tricky system to get working but hopefully that was good for you. Thanks for watching. If I press this, the, the left button now, it should exit out the game. So let's see. And it should load up with my uh, interface. There we go. So that's it done guys so hopefully that's been good for you uh and if any more requests for any instructional videos let me know but until next time i'll see you later